Now that we know why we need to think critically and we know the basics about what critical thinking is, here are seven ways to think critically that can help in the beginning. Of course, there are many ways to think critically. This is just a good start. The first way to think critically is to think long term. This is something like the concept of object permanence. When babies are first growing up, object permanence is one of the first things they have to learn. When mom or dad walk out of the room, they haven't died. They haven't ceased to exist. Even though the baby can't see them, mom and dad still live and they'll probably come back. Playing peekaboo can help infants understand the concept of object permanence. Look, I don't see mommy. <gasps> there she is. You mean she's still here even though I can't see her right now? Now, in my opinion, the question about why do good and bad things happen if God is good is really a question about object permanence and long-term thinking, but I won't get into that. I'll just say that object permanence is about where most people stop learning long-term thinking. As an example, let's take a basic productivity curve. Here you have a way of doing things and you're pretty effective at it and you're pretty productive, but then you switch over to a way that's much more efficient. Well, first you have to learn how that works, so productivity goes way down. You're really not very good at it, and you have to learn, and it kind of scares people, and you think, gee, is this really worth it? I mean, I'm doing much, much less work. How long can this go on? And then you start to learn how it works, and things begin to improve, but are they improving fast enough? I mean, it's really not that much better, but then you learn it more and more and more, and then productivity really improves, and you get a lot better until finally your more efficient way of doing things finally pays off, and you have the better way of doing things. That's a basic productivity improvement curve. People who don't have critical thinking will tend to stop production right at the bottom. They'll say, this isn't working, and they quit. They don't understand that with time, they could actually be very, very happy. It takes long-term thinking to understand the benefit of doing something newer and better. That is actually part of critical thinking. Another way to think critically is to know the difference between labels and contents. Just because we say that something is good or bad doesn't mean that it necessarily is. For example, if I have a bottle of water, but I say that it's a bottle of sand, well, that would be a lie. Now, there are a lot of things in this world that try to get people's money or lie or steal or cheat. Know the difference between the labels and the contents. If someone says, I'm going to mow your lawn in a way that's much more efficient, well, is it actually more efficient or is he just saying that it is? You have to look at what's actually happening, not only what people call it. Two examples of this in the law would be the Patriot Act from President George W. Bush and the Affordable Care Act from President Obama. Both of these laws sounded good to the people who voted for those presidents, but many people said the Patriot Act really isn't very patriotic. It's kind of against the idea of being a patriot, isn't it? And they said the same thing about the Affordable Care Act with Obama. Gee, it says it should make health care more affordable, but is it really? Now, I'm not going to debate those issues here, but those are two examples of where a law was called one thing, but the critics said, I think it's the opposite. Those are things to consider as far as knowing the difference between the labels and the contents. On the one hand, we could have a bottle of sand that's labeled as a bottle of water, but we also could have a bottle of water that's just labeled a bottle of liquid. It's not labeled very specifically. So sometimes labels lie, other times labels aren't as specific or they're too specific. Either way, know the difference 
between the labels and the contents. Labels shouldn't lie. And recognizing the difference is part of critical thinking. Also, know the deep reasons why something is true. If something is true, you should know the deeper reasons why. Very few people have actually thought about something and learned about something enough to know the deeper reasons why a true thing is true and why a lie is a lie. Don't accept the answers even your parents or your teachers tell you. Always try to learn more. If you read something in a book, don't stop there. Learn more about something. Know the deeper reasons, the real reasons, the reasons behind the reasons why something is true. That will help you know how to think critically when you look at the cons and pros and when you argue for and against your own idea. There is a difference between an opinion and a simple report. Yesterday, a man stood up and walked down the street. Well, that's very different from saying, yesterday, I saw a bad man outside. One is opinion and one is simply a report of what happened. Most people can't tell the difference. They really can't. It's very difficult, even at times, for the most experienced critical thinkers to know the difference between an opinion and a report. Always ask yourself this question, is that opinion or am I reporting something that's true? You'll never stop learning this one, never. Even if you work in the news industry, you will always be asking this question until you die. Always know the difference and ask the difference between an opinion and a report. That's part of critical thinking. Never assume. Never assume anything. Never be assumptive. The biggest way we assume is with culture. We think that things are always done the way we do them everywhere in the world. For example, do you know why you dial 1 when you call a long-distance number? Do you know what the number 1 actually is? Most people think it's just the way to call a long ways away. Actually, 1 means U.S. and Canada. That's the country code. You're actually dialing back into the United States and Canada when you press 1. Most people don't know that. They just assumed. Never assume. One of the biggest ways to assume is with different cultures. If you want to curb your own ability to assume and assume less, the best way is to encounter people from different cultures. There are many different cultures within every country, but traveling to other countries can also help. It ain't what you know. It's what you think you know that ain't so. Never assume. Just look at the word assume and see what different words you could probably spell with it. Stay on topic. Know what you're talking about. When you're thinking critically, different ideas will come up, different things to consider. It's easy to get distracted. When you're arguing about different points, that doesn't mean fighting, that just means arguing. This is good, that's bad, well why? That's called an argument. When you're having those arguments with friends and other people, it's easy to get off topic and talk about other things. If you want to change the topic and rabbit trail, that's okay, just know that you're doing it. Stay on topic, and if you leave the topic, at least know it. But don't keep talking about something as if you're still talking about something when you've actually changed the topic and you're talking about something else altogether. Know when you're on topic and know when you're getting off topic. Staying on topic is part of critical thinking. Seventh and last here, know the difference between effort and results. People who try to take your money will use this against you. They will say, well, I'm trying, I'm really, really trying, I'm really, really trying. This is something that politicians from every political party do all the time. I'm really, really trying, it's just hard. This is also one of the secrets that useless consultants, as opposed to good consultants, will do. Well, I'm here to help you. I'm here to discuss your problems with you. And then they give you an answer that doesn't really help. But they're trying. Never grant people points for effort. 
only grant people points for results. If you're a parent or a teacher or anyone else in a leadership position, never tell people, oh, well, you tried, so I'll give you some credit. Trying doesn't help in the end of the day. It's a bad lesson to teach people, and we don't understand how the world works, and we don't know how to think critically. You will always be fooled by liars and charlatans, and you'll end up buying snake oil if you don't know the difference between effort and results.